you. And in this year, when there seems to be no end to the glut of news, the reports out of Libya this morning are that NATO airstrikes struck the house of one of Muammar Gaddafi's sons. The Associated Press is quoting uh, members of Gaddafi's government as saying that Gaddafi's son and three of Gaddafi's grandchildren uh, were killed. Joining us to talk about that is one of the key members of the Senate Armed Services Committee, John McCain, who is just back from Libya. Number one, do you have confirmation yet, uh, Senator, that indeed one of Gaddafi's sons was killed? We do not, uh, and I'm not sure exactly what the situation was or what the outcome, but um, it is obviously an attempt uh, to remove uh, Gaddafi's command and control. and. Uh, we regret any loss of innocent life. Is, uh, is NATO going after Gaddafi and his family? I think that uh, if you view the, the Gaddafi himself as uh, part of the command and control, I think you could argue that if he was in one of those places, then it would be part of it. Um, but Bob, we tried many times to kill leaders. You remember when we were going to kill Saddam Hussein at the beginning of the last war in Iraq? Uh, we tried to kill Osama bin Laden on several occasions. It's not as easy as you think. And so we should be taking out his command and control. And if he is killed or injured because of that, that's fine. But we ought to have a strategy to help the rebels succeed and overthrow Gaddafi and everybody associated with him. You were one of the uh, first to call for the United States getting involved in this. Are you satisfied with uh, how the administration is handling this? I'm not because we have taken a backseat role. The president has, quote, withdrawn from NATO. I'd like to remind you that NATO is an organization of 28 countries. Now with, Li with Italy, there's now seven of them actually in the fight. They don't have the assets that the United States of America does. America, United States is NATO, is NATO. So the British and the French, uh, God bless them and others, they don't have the assets. They are running out of some of their munitions and we need to get back in the fight. Well, I applaud the Predator being added into, but the worst, in, into the fight, the worst outcome, a very bad outcome here would be a stalemate, which would then open the door to Al-Qaeda. Well, what, what do you want the president to do? Say that uh, the United States air assets, and I am opposed, and we should not use ground troops, United States air assets and many other assets should be brought into the fight. We should recognize the Transition National Council, and thereby freeing up money so that they can start financing their operations and uh, providing people with the things they need. Humanitarian efforts, communications capability, facilitate the movement of weapons in not the United States arm, but facilitate as we did during the Afghan war. Communications, kit Gaddafi off television. You know, when people in, in Benghazi see him on television, they're scared because this guy has become so real. Take him off What well, well, are you of saying television. take NATO out of it and put the United no, States have, in? No, have NATO remain in all seven of our allies who are willing to, but the United States has got to get its assets back into the air fight. And we've got to do it very strenuously and understand that right now, unless somehow Gaddafi falls with, from within, that we may have a stalemated situation and that would be very bad. It's events on the ground that will drive Gaddafi's desire to leave or not to leave. Right now, in many respects, he's not doing too badly for a third-rate military power. Let's uh, shift to Syria because you're sure. just back from that part of the world. Uh, you know, over the weekend, the government troops fired on protesters uh, as more of these people, thousands upon thousands of Syrians, uh, were out in the streets. And, and, and the government was opening fire. Uh, I think about uh, something like 60 people were killed. Now, you, Senator Lieberman, Senator uh, Graham, have called on the United States to, among other things, what, break relations uh, with Syria? Where, where do you think this is going? I think it's going very badly for the people of Syria. I think it's clear that Bashar Assad is willing to slaughter his own people. The question is, is what can we do to affect the outcome? 
and frankly, I don't see a military option. In Libya, they had a, a group of people who were at least uh, semi-organized that we could support. The situation lent itself very much to the use of air power. Uh, obviously, increased sanctions, whatever pressures we can bring to bear, uh, but it's going to be a very bloody time, I'm afraid, in Syria. And any illusions we had about him being a, quote, reformer, Let's not talk about that anymore. Could I just mention one thing sure. back on Libya one second? I met with the Transition National Council. The finance minister is an economics professor from the University of Washington. One, is a member, one of the members is a, was in Gaddafi's prison for 31 years. These are not al-Qaeda. They're people who wanted to rise up against a brutal and oppressive dictator. And finally, I went to the hospital in Benghazi. A ship had come in from Misrata with wounded. I saw these young men dying, wounded, dying before my eyes. We, shouldn't, we should be doing whatever we can within reason to prevent further massacres which are taking place in Misrata as we speak. Let me just ask you to give me your assessment of, of American leadership at this point and President Obama. Well, look, I, I respect the president, and sometimes it's very inappropriate for me to second guess. Obviously, I lost to him in the presidential election. But American leadership is vital in the world. There's no country like America. We should be leading. We should not be following. We should not be behind. We should be saying, look, we're going to help the Egyptians set up a, a government and a democracy. We're going to help Tunisia. And we are going to help the Libyan people in ways that are viable and reasonable to do. The Americans are war weary. They don't want to get us into another ground war, and we shouldn't. But we have to, for example, again in NATO, we are NATO, and we should be leading. And that's what I would like to see the United States of America do. Only the United States is capable of helping these people in the most seismic and most incredible period in the world's history. This Arab Spring is not confined even to the Arab countries, but how we handle it will determine the entire 21st century. Let's uh, shift to matters closer to home. Mm -hmm. Gas prices are, are going out of sight. The deficit is totally out of control. Congress comes back this week, and we're told one of the first things that the uh, Democratic leadership uh, in the Senate will do uh, will be to uh, introduce legislation uh, to take away the, uh, the uh, uh, subsidies uh, mm -hmm. to the energy companies. Good thing? Bad thing? Would you vote for that? I I'm, I'm very, have very mixed emotions about that because we are going to have to ask a lot of organizations and groups in America to make sacrifices uh, in, in order to get our budget balanced. But I would not want to do anything that would be a disincentive for further oil exploration, exploration and exploitation. We need a lot of oil, and we need nuclear power, we need solar, we need all those things. But right now, oil exploration in the Gulf and off both coasts, in my view, uh, should be open, uh, should be ideas. So and you have an open mind about that. Let me I just do, ask I you. Do, I do, because uh, obviously we're going to have to ask everybody to make sacrifices in order to, to get the spending under control. Let me ask you about the thing that all of Washington is buzzing about, especially since <laughs> last night, and that is, do you somehow sense that the president may be trying to make Donald Trump the face of your party, the Republican Party, and what would be the uh, result of that? I think he may try to, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think Mr. Trump is having a lot of fun, and I, it's pretty clear he enjoys the limelight. Um, we have very serious candidates, and uh, um, I think that Mr. Trump wants to run, he's welcome to run. Do but you I think th he's trying to play a race card here, suggesting we ought to check uh, Barack Obama's college grades, that maybe he, had, he got into uh, Harvard because he was black? I wouldn't uh, accuse him of that, but all of this is so unnecessary. With unemployment where it is, with the challenges we face, let's not have a nice national conversation about that. Let's have the national conversation about the up upcoming debt limit, which is going to be the subject of many of your shows in the next, yeah. in the next few weeks. That's what we ought to be focusing our attention all on. All right. Thank Thanks, you very much, Senator McCain. When we come back, we'll talk a little about presidential politics, show you what President Obama said last night about Donald Trump in a minute.